Hello YouTube and fellow Star Wars collectors! On this episode of Toys Are The Way, we will be taking a look at my recent acquisitions. If you're new to the channel or a fan of Star Wars collecting, be sure to smash a like on this video, remember to subscribe, and make sure to ring that bell to stay notified. Welcome back everyone! As you can see, I have a bunch of new vintage collection items to take a look at, as well as some older vehicles that I've managed to pick up. We have the TIE Interceptor Elite, the speeder bike from the Expanded Universe, the 40th Anniversary Skiff Guard Repack, and Cassian Andor, the Phase 2 Clone Trooper, and Hunter from the most recent wave. The rest of the characters from that wave are on their way from Big Bad Toy Store and should be here within the next day or so, so definitely be on the lookout as I review each one of those figures. Let's begin by taking a look at this latest addition to my vehicle collection, the TIE Elite Interceptor from the 30th Anniversary Collection. This was a Toys R Us exclusive back in 2007 and retailed for $35. This Interceptor now commands a fairly high price tag on the secondary market, but I was fortunate enough to get this one for $100 with shipping. The TIE Interceptor Elite has some wonderful paint deco, setting it apart from the rest of my Imperial Squadron. The cockpit has red decals of different Rebel fighters, signifying this Imperial pilot's kill count, and the bold red markings on the wings really help this vehicle stand out. While I do prefer the blue-gray color of the Vintage Collection release when compared to this version, it's still an excellent looking vehicle. The only setbacks are that the interior does not have the same highly detailed control panel or seat, and the cockpit opens to the side instead of towards the back. Additionally, the 181st Squadron TIE Pilot leaves a lot to be desired. This figure barely has enough articulation to be considered an action figure. Swivel arms and an additional swivel on one elbow will allow for limited posing, but I plan to have this pilot displayed inside the vehicle. All in all, this is a pretty decent TIE Interceptor, and I'm very happy to add it to my TIE Fighter Squadron. Moving on, we have Hunter and two of the other figures from the latest Vintage Collection wave. I am really looking forward to getting the rest of these characters and opening up these figures. In the meantime, I couldn't resist checking out the first member of Clone Force 99 to be added to the Vintage Collection, who I've got to say is an excellent figure. I really hope Hasbro works on getting the rest of the Bad Batch promptly into the Vintage Collection, as Season 2 has come and gone and the Black Series already has the whole crew, plus their new looks on the way, I can't help but urge Hasbro to get these characters into our collections sooner rather than later. Moving on, we have the Skiff Guard repacks from the Return of the Jedi 40th Anniversary. While these TVC 1.0 figures are limited in their articulation due to swivel hips, they are still essential for recreating a number of scenes from Return of the Jedi. Additionally, I mentioned in my previous video that I would be getting a number of these for customs. Therefore, I ordered a solid case of Woof, Nikto, and Kathaba, plus the repack wave which included two yak faces. While that figure didn't interest me as much, since it's pretty easy to come by, I did want to use it as a base for another Athorian custom in the future. Yakface is also blessed with ball jointed hips, which makes it a better figure when compared to the rest of the wave, and I would have been ecstatic if Hasbro had improved articulation on the other figures from this repack wave. Nikto was one of the missing figures that I needed for my Jabba the Hutt display, and I'm grateful to add this one to the collection. We are very fortunate to have these incredible background aliens in TVC, but I can't help feeling like they could be better. Their dated leg articulation simply does not hold up when compared to recent Vintage Collection releases, which is very unfortunate because each one of these figures has incredible sculpting, detail, and included accessories, which is why I opted to order so many of these figures despite their setbacks. Not only am I planning to use their head sculpts, parts, and accessories to create a number of different customs, but I also intend to upgrade each one of these characters with ball jointed hips, as seen in my recent Clatoonian Raider video. I have a few ideas on parts that I'm planning to use for this kit bash project, and will be sharing that in an upcoming video, so be sure to check that out in the future. But with all that being said, Woof is my favorite figure from TVC 1.0. He has incredible sculpting and soft goods. The green Nyctos were prominent in The Mandalorian, and I am very excited to create a number of kit bash figures using this Nikto head sculpt. Lastly, we have the speeder bike from the Expanded Universe. This Power of the Force 2 release has such a classic look that I find nostalgic and reminiscent of my younger days. Many of you are probably familiar with this vehicle, and while I never had this release, I plan on customizing it and adding this speeder to my spaceport diorama. I hope you've enjoyed this video and taking a look at my recent acquisitions. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget to smash a like on this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really helps promote these videos and is always greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and may the force be with you.